Wait! Before you start this video, I just wanted to tell you that this is not the same as the other one. I'm talking about this one. All right. What you're about to get into is a spine-tingling, soul-taking, toe-curling, eject... Never mind. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Follow the story of the destructive path of the Osabe family. The day was bright when a mother and her child came across a cat that was sleeping on the side of the bushes. When the little boy requested to touch the cat, its body was cold as soon as he caressed it. Then, his mother checked and stated that it was dead. When asked why it was dead, his mother only looked upon him and gave him a little smile. On a certain day, this young boy, whose name was Seichi, was sleeping soundly on his bed, while her mother, Seiko, kept calling for him. After seeing him still asleep, she went and sat beside him and tickled him by his neck, to which he immediately got up. As soon as he sat up, his mother asked if he'd like a steamed meat bun or the steamed red bean bun. Seiichi still looked pretty sleepy, but he told her that he wanted a steamed meat bun. Later, after he was told to go downstairs, his father, Ichiro, was standing by the table getting prepared for work. Seiichi then sat down as his mother laid his breakfast in front of him. Then, the father informed his wife that he'll be drinking with his co-workers, to which his wife asked if he'll come home late. Ichiro told her that he'll keep them company since he doesn't plan on sticking with them for much longer. Eventually, the father picks off and leaves the house. When he left, Seiko was watching a weather forecast while he gazed upon her, probably mesmerized about something. Then, his mother turned and told him that today's going to be a hot and humid day. Which also reminds her, she saw that Seiichi's swimsuit name tag was fading, so she decided to write it out for him. Later, Seiichi picks off to the streets to go to his school, but suddenly, one of his classmates purposely decks him from the back. His two other friends then casually walks up to them as one of the kids notices that today's weather is going to be hot. When they asked Seiichi what they'll have in the first session, he told them that they'll be studying Japanese. Then, the glasses kid followed up with another question and asked them if they wore their swimsuit underneath their shirts, to which they did. But when he asked Seiichi if he'd also wear his swimsuit, he pulled his pants down, which caught him by surprise. The other kids played along and kept trying to mess with Seiichi. Later inside the classroom, it was cramped with students who were busy talking to their respective group, all while Seiichi was captivated by the girl at the distance as she was talking to her friend. When turned over to Seiichi, he swayed his eyes away from her, then he casually looked back at her, blushing. At the swimming pool, Seichi's group walks by the showering area when he sees the same girl talking to another guy. Knowing that he had to step up, he decided to poke fun at them by shouting that Fukishi was talking to a boy. While he waited, Fukishi catched him by surprise, completely pissing himself. It's just a metaphor, all right. When he saw her run off, he couldn't help but crack a weird smile upon seeing her playful side. Then Seiichi's friends approached him and asked what he was doing just standing there idly. He was then informed that they were planning on going out to eat pork ramen the next weekend. It was an eventful day as the group separated ways, excited for tomorrow to meet up at their friend's house. Back at Seiichi's house, he welcomes himself back and is greeted by his mother. When Seiichi grabbed food from the table, Seiko told him that his aunt and cousin will be coming home the next day. When she asked him if he's got any plans with his friends, Seichi didn't hesitate and told her that he'll just cancel his plans. Even though it was all right for Seiko's son to go somewhere, her son wasn't bothered at all and still decided to cancel his plan with his friends for tomorrow. That night, while they were eating in the living room, something reminded Seichi and told his mother that he had a certain dream last night. Inside that dream, Seiichi and his mother were walking down the street when they saw a cat sleeping on the end of the road. It was cold enough to confirm that it was already dead. After the story, his mother looked surprised when she realized that Seiichi had actually remembered that it was from his youngest memory, since he was just two years old. Seiko was astonished when she recalled the exact detail in that memory since it was 11 years ago, back when Seiichi was just a small child. His mother then proceeds to place her hands gently on Seiichi's head, 
as she carries a lovely smile on her face. Seiichi breaks from her grasp, unable to bear the embarrassment. When he's about to leave, his mother wondered how the cat had died that day. But even Seiichi could only say that it might be because it was hit by a car. The next day, and like every day, Seiichi would always start his morning by greeting his mom. After greeting Seiichi back, Seiko offered him a choice for his breakfast like yesterday, and still he chose the steamed meat bun. Then he was greeted by his father Ichiro getting prepared for work again. Seiichi was confused as he was certain that his father didn't have a job this weekend, but his father says that he's just going to complete his leftover work. But what are you having for lunch? his wife asked. Since Seiichi's aunt and cousin were coming, she was hoping that he would come back to eat lunch with them. Ichiro had an idea and told her to simply order them some udon when he comes back for lunch. When his father was about to leave the house, he looked upon Seiichi with a smile, happy to know that he gets along with his cousin Shigeru. After his dad left, Seiko went to clean the house while Seiichi was observing her. As she was cleaning, their doorbell had rung, signaling the visitor's arrival. Under the unbearable heat, Seiichi's aunt was relieved to have finally arrived at their house and met the family. When she asked Seiichi how he's been doing today, he gladly replied, saying it's been good. Then, as soon as they entered the house, Shigeru wasted no time and invited him to play in Seiichi's room. When they walked upstairs, Seiichi saw his mother and his aunt having a wonderful chat with one another. Sometime later, the two locked their eyes on the screen, somewhat enjoying their playtime together. Is that Tetris? Yeah, it's Ballsack Tetris. Anyway, Shigeru beats Seiichi easily and teases him by calling him weak. As for his punishment, Shigeru flicked his forehead. But hey, at least they're having the time of their life. After the first game, Shigeru went to look for another game they could play. And on the spot, Shigeru mocked him, calling Seiichi a mama's boy, which confused him. He meant that his mother was too overprotective, because he had already seen that Seiichi's mother was clingy to him. Seiichi couldn't believe what he was hearing. But not only that, Shigeru knew that his mother was also the type to stand at the back of the classroom since he was at his preschool. During that time, Seichi had known that she was there only because he was always crying since he didn't like coming to preschool. Shigeru kept on insisting as he laughed about it, but Seichi had enough of it and told him not to badmouth his mother any further. Seeing how serious Seichi was, Shigeru cracks up and tells him that he was just kidding around. After a quick dispute, the two eventually got back to playing their next game. Later, both families were having quality time as they enjoyed their dinner together. Then, Seichi was told by his aunt to have a share of the food they have. As they were eating, Shigeru told Seichi that he wanted to play again tomorrow. When Shigeru asked her mother if he could, she told him that they've been coming here all the time. Hearing this, Seiko gladly welcomes them as they're free to drop by any time. Now that they're allowed to, Seichi's aunt asked her Shigeru if he'd like to come again to which he affirms. After a moment of silence, his aunt was reminded of something as she cracked up a goofy-ass smile, asking them if they were planning on having a summer vacation. She stated that her father wanted to go hiking with the family, and while they're at it, they plan on stopping by at a hot spring. As soon as she mentioned the hot springs, Seichi's parents found themselves fascinated by it. Seiichi captivates himself with his food while his aunt and his parents recall their fun memories where they used to take baths together in the hot spring. After a while, his cousin and aunt had eventually left as Seiichi sees them off with his mother. When they left, Seiko told Seiichi to come back inside, but he hesitated for a moment. When she noticed that Seiichi seemed down, she went back to him to check what was wrong. Seiichi said that it was nothing at all, and his mother proceeded to poke him and wished to know what he had in his mind. In a shy tone, Seiichi thanked his mother for everything she had done. Seiko was so happy she kissed Seiichi by his cheek, which caught him off guard, making him embarrassed. Seiko was relieved to have heard those words from him and thanked her son. After that day, Shigeru and his mom started coming over to Seiichi's house every week, always spending time with one another.
Inside the school, their teacher dismisses the class while also letting them know to keep a high spirit during their summer vacation. When the class was about to head out, Seiichi's friends invited him to walk home with them. The question was overshadowed when he was asked what grades he got in the report card, to which Seiichi told them that he got an average. As they argued for a bit, Fukishi and her friend were seen discussing something secretly from behind their backs. Later, as they walked down the street, the glasses kid wanted to meet up with them at his place to play some games. But Seiichi couldn't come along since his cousin always comes over to his house, in an unfortunate moment, the group separates as Seichi walks his own way home. But to his surprise, he coincidentally bumps into the girls who seemed like they were looking for him. When asked what they wanted, Fukishi's friend told him that she wanted to walk home with him. Seichi was confused as Fukishi was shy, and as they were standing, her friend left her to be alone with Seichi. Now that they're alone together, Fukishi asked Seichi if it was all right to come along with him, and he guaranteed it. Under the sunny clouds, the two walk beside each other, unable to utter a word, probably because they are shy. All of a sudden, Fukishi notices a cat in the middle of the street. As she pets the cat, Seiichi looks somewhat nostalgic about it. Then, Fukishi asked him if she could come over next time, but Seiichi was a little confused. She meant that she wanted to go to his house, to which Seiichi looked embarrassed as he questioned the reason. Fukishi poked fun at him by telling him not to expect anything, which made Seiichi sway his head away in embarrassment. When she asked him again, Seiichi thought she was just joking. Silence grew all around them, until Seiichi explains that he has to ask permission from her mom first since his cousin always comes over. Fukishi rolls with it and tells Seiichi to give her an update when he gets an answer, and with that, it was declared as their first date. When Seiichi arrived home, she was greeted by her mother and was inquired about the results of his report card. An Asian household indeed. After he handed it out, Seiko puts a smile on her face as she pats Seiichi on the head, proud that he got mostly A grades in his class. She started caressing him by his cheeks and noticed that he was unusually quiet this time round. She knew something was up, and Seiichi asked if he could let his friend come over insisting only when his aunt and his cousin aren't here at the moment. His mother was okay with it, but she reminded him that the family are going on a trip this summer, so she thought it'd be best if he could invite them over after the trip. Seeing Seiichi get his request turned down, his mother apologized for it. When he went upstairs, Seiko compensated him by offering him stew for lunch, which brightened up Seiichi for the moment. As he smiled, Seiko noticed this and asked why he looked so happy today, wanting to know if anything nice happened to him recently. He tells her that there is nothing special at all and eventually goes up to his room, leaving his mother confused. Out in the woods, Seiichi and Shigeru's family met up at their designated spot just in the clear of the mountain. The two families shared their thoughts about how nice the weather was. Shigeru noticed that his grandpa was using a trekking pole and showed interest in it, so in response, he thought he'd give his grandson his spare. Ichiro's cousin saw him smoking and wondered if he's out of shape for that, but was told he can handle himself just fine. Then, Shigeru's grandpa decided to have some fun for a while, and thought that they should hang out in an inn later and crack a cold one with the boys. After a quick meetup, the family eventually set out on a journey through the steep field inside the woods. Some of them seemed already out of breath as Shigeru and his mother showed signs of struggle, but his grandpa was relentless and told them to push onwards. Seiko was stunned to realize that her mother persevered despite her age, but she was told not to worry about it and keep moving. As for Seichi, his cousin called out to him, which caused his competitive side to rise up and was able to pass by his parents. Even his aunt was amazed. He then offers his hand to him. So Seichi reaches for it and is pulled up. After that, Shigeru gave Seichi a long stick to use as a trekking pole, and eventually they continued hiking as Seiko looked up at them, seemingly relieved that Seichi was safe. A little further to their trip, the family took a break in a small rock cliff, trying to get a breeze of fresh air. 
when one of their cousins asked how much distance they've covered. And to their surprise, their grandpa told them they've only walked a third up the mountain. Meanwhile, Shigeru hollered at Seiichi to come look over the mountain. But his mother looked a little worried for Seiichi's safety as he approached the cliff. Seeing how far the drop was, Shigeru urged Seiichi to come a bit closer to the edge. Seichi slowly approached his way to the cliff, but his mother came forward and assisted her son. Seichi's aunt thought he was fine and told Seiko that she's just worrying over nothing. When Shigeru got Seichi to look over the mountain, he was pushed into the edge, about to plunge to his death. But luckily, his mother managed to grab a hold of him, leaving both sweat and fear for each other. Seiichi's aunt bursts into laughter as she mocks Seiichi's mother about how completely overprotective she was. Ain't no way you let that slide, Seiichi. You should have knocked the f- The family were laughing their asses off, thinking it was funny to prank someone like that. Even his father was smiling. What a dick. Feeling embarrassed, Seiko apologizes for the sudden reaction. When it's finally time to move out, the grandpa decided to head out into the woods once again. As they pushed through the steepy steps, Seiichi looked upon his mother and felt sorry for her that day. After they make a fool out of Seiko just for protecting her son, the stupid-ass family decided to rest for a picnic. Seemingly, both Seiichi and his mother were far away from the family together, implying their closeness with one another. While Seiichi observes the family having fun together, he remembered the scene from back then where Seiko was made fun of. His mother suddenly called out to him if he wanted to eat a rice ball, but Seiichi declined the offer since he's not hungry for now. Suddenly, Shigeru walks towards the both of them and asks Seiichi if he wanted to come along to pee with him, which made him uncomfortable. Shigeru's mother told them to go toward the other side if they're going to do it, so Shigeru was excited while Seiichi obviously felt bothered about something. After a while... The both of them answered nature's call in the bushes, but Seiichi was still feeling awkward about them making fun of his mother. The silence was interrupted as Shigeru told him that the both of them should cross streams. And they actually did. Seiichi felt ashamed, so he turned to the other side, and it made Shigeru a bit irritated. So, as a way to enjoy their time even further, Shigeru wanted Seiichi to come along with his exploration, which made him worried. But Shigeru reassured him that everything will be all right. So they set forth, and they kept walking and walking, until Seiichi noticed a big ass tree that gave him the creeps since he doesn't know where the both of them are going. And eventually, the both of them found a cliff higher than last time, with a breathtaking view. So Shigeru decided to invite Seiichi to also take a good look. But he refused knowing that he'll get pushed again. Shigeru made it clear that the beef was already squashed, but Seiichi was still not having any of it, which made Shigeru annoyed. Suddenly, Seiko pops up beside Seiichi. How did she find them in that wide-ass, bushy ass? Seiko inquired about their venture, while Shigeru was creeped out, not knowing how the both of them got found despite taking a long stroll. Seiichi's mother warned Shigeru to stop standing at the cliff's edge since it's dangerous, but Shigeru, being the daring child that he is, danced at the cliff, which made Seiko frightened. He continued dancing, but one misstep was all it took, for him to trip. Thankfully, Seiichi's mother managed to step in and catch him. While Shigeru was within a hold of Seiko's arms, a bunch of butterflies began to swarm around her, implying her insanity is about to take over. Seiko reminded him to be careful, but on the spur of the moment, Seiichi noticed something wrong. As Shigeru tried to get himself out, he noticed something wrong with Seiichi's mother. And here began a downward spiral of Seiichi Osabe's life. Seiko pushed Shigeru off a cliff with no hesitation. Seiichi was speechless after noticing the wicked act committed by his mother in front of him. Eventually, his mother slowly turns his face to look at him, just to give the same look eleven years ago. His first instinct was to avert his gaze from his mother. Seiichi's hands were cramping up, realizing that he was breathing too fast due to the heaviness of the situation. 
Suddenly, Seiko screamed loudly and told her son to get some help from the family, since Shigeru accidentally fell off a cliff. Yeah, right. Seiichi stood frozen in place as he couldn't believe what he was seeing. But his mother told him to hurry up, so he immediately dashed to the woods as his mother was starting to go insane. He kept running and running as he remembers the same face Seiko used to give him back when he was still a child. Fortunately, he stumbled upon his family. His dad inquired about the situation since they heard a scream coming from his direction. Seiichi averted his gaze and lied through his teeth, explaining that Shigeru accidentally fell off a cliff. Shigeru's mother was in shock and immediately ran towards the woods, hoping that he was just lying. Seiichi eventually had to lead his family to the location, so all of them kept running as fast as they could, and they arrived. At the cliff, Seiichi's mother can be seen lying down, waiting for someone to come to her. She turns around and Shigeru's mother immediately asks her what happened to Shigeru. Shigeru's mother was anxious, but something was off with Seiko, which Seichi noticed. She eventually gets a hold of herself and explains that everything was Shigeru's fault. His aunt couldn't believe what just happened, while Seiichi's mother started to break down and apologized. Shigeru's mother tried to look for her son below the cliff, and they immediately noticed a hat that was stuck that seemed to belong to Shigeru. Seiichi's aunt was panicking, while her husband told her to relax and find a place they could come down to. Ichiro's grandfather immediately told him to call an ambulance on the roadside of the mountain while those who were left were tasked to also find a way to get down from the mountain. The family eventually left, while Ichiro reassured Seiko that it's not her fault and everything will be all right. As she was getting consoled, Seiko's eyes started to darken, implying that she's currently out of her mind right now. His father called out to Seiichi and told him to stay for now, since he'll be looking for a way to communicate with the nearest hospital. His dad eventually left and disappeared in the woods, leaving Seiichi with his mother. Seiichi was sweating buckets as he doesn't know what's going on with his mother. So he tried approaching her, and upon there, he noticed his mother mumbling about something. His mother seemingly lost touch with reality and had an episode of psychosis. He could not believe what he was seeing, so he shouted at his mother and it brought her back. Seiko still seemingly dazed, gets up and comes toward Seichi, telling him to embrace her tightly. Seichi couldn't believe the flow of events that just happened, and realized that something might be wrong with his dearest mother. This is all for part one of the manga recap. We will not be doing another part since it's a slow burn manga. I recommend you to continue reading it. Since we have covered exactly chapter one to seven, you can continue from there onwards. And as always, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day, y'all, and peace.